So happy St. Patrick's Day, Tara. Happy St. Patrick's Day. The, the day of my people. Let me, let, let me sing you the song of my people. <laughs> that's not the song of my people. I know, but that's what happens. My people have many wonderful songs. Happy pub songs and sad war songs and something rebel songs. And they all involve drinking. No, they don't. <laughs> well, come on, I'm Irish too. I, I am Irish too. I can say that shit. I'm allowed. I'm like this much Irish. I'm like this much Irish. I'm like I'm a quarter. I'm first generation and shit. Well, then my quarter can say those. I've I've got a quarter's worth of blah. You're drinking crummy Jimmy Buffett beer, for God's sake. It was all I had in the fridge. And uh, be impressed. I am I should be throwing up right now because I've been throwing up all weekend. I did not throw it up. You're also not wearing any green. Well, no. So if I wore any green, I'd be invisible. See, let me show you. This is This is green. This would be me if I were wearing green. I would be coming. See? You can see through... Yeah, that, that, that wouldn't work, because that back there, green. Whatever. Whatever. Get a blue screen. God. I'll get right on. So how are you doing, Tara? Okay. You okay? I didn't do anything exciting for St. Patrick's Day. I worked and came home and had corned beef with the family. But you have a kitten, so there's that. But I have a kitten. You have a kitten. We never see the kitten. I'm getting to, it's, is I it a know. phantom kitten? The kitten, like, hangs out in here, and then she doesn't like being locked in spaces. So, like, as soon as I close the door, she starts to cry. <laughs> because she doesn't like being confined. So, you know. One of these days that we'll get the kitten on the show. One of these days, the kitten... <laughs> And then everybody will forget all about me because they'll yeah. be all about the kitten. Oh, he's, he's a cat on the internet. Yeah, she's really cute. She gives little nose kisses. If you stick your nose out, she'll rub her nose against yours. <laughs> and then sometimes headbutt you in the eye socket. Yeah, that's cute when they're little and they get bigger. That shit starts to become a little bit more annoying, especially when you're trying to sleep. She's actually, she's, she's a very polite kitty. Like, I've never once been scratched. You know, and she's like had her claws out and like run her paw down my face, and I'm like, oh, there goes my face. But I've never been scratched. And she's, no, she's, that's just her way of saying I could kill you anytime I wanted. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> she does wake me up in the morning to let her in the room. Once everybody's out of the house, she gets very lonely. So she's like, I know you're in there. Let me in. She just cries at the door to like get my lazy butt out of bed and let her in. We've got news tonight. Yes, we do. Oh, we've got news. And we are, we even have a, a St. Patrick's Day story already. Really? All fucking ready. Jesus. Wow. Shall we begin? Let's begin. All right. Each week, Catherine, the Radio Dead Air audience, go out on the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff. Bring it back here for a little segment we like to call. What the fuck is wrong with you? And this week, yeah, um, obviously lots of people are preparing and are currently, as we speak, celebrating St. Patrick's Day, otherwise known as Hangover Day. Um, no, that's the day after. That's right. That's two. That's the day after St. Patrick's Day. Um, and so obviously you go out, you get your supplies, you prep in advance. I think these guys went a little overboard on the prepping for supplies. And I'm just going to address this one briefly because, well... Yeah. Uh, where did I put your thing so I can give you the link? Where's your thing? There's your thing. I give you the link. I said. I said I'll give you the link here. There we go. Um. <laughs> from Canada, which kind of makes sense. Oh, Canada. Um, police sees. Thousands of beers at Waterloo Home before St. Patrick's Day party. 
Waterloo, Ontario. Police say charges are pending against under provincial liquor license rules after police seized some 4,400 cans of beer from a Waterloo, Ontario home. Investigators allege an unofficial student group was planning to sell the brews during a St. Patrick's Day party but didn't get a permit. They say the group allegedly already sold tickets to the event through social media. 4,400 beers. That's a lot of beer. Like, how long have they been stockpiling that? Not just the fact that it's a lot of beer. They were advertising this shit on social media. That's a very easy way to say, come and steal my beer. Yeah. Well, they might have had, like, a leprechaun guarding the beer. <laughs> what are we talking, like, you know, a, a Lucky Charms leprechaun or a Warwick Davis leprechaun? Oh, the horror movie Leprechaun, the, totally. yeah, the, yeah. That Lucky Charms fucker is way too friendly. Also, he's not genuine because his shit is all about four-leaf clovers. He's a poser. He's a poser. But he's got the tasty marshmallows. Oh. Totally Irish. Well, speaking of drugs, uh, this next one. This is from Seattle. And... Uh, <laughs> Remember how we always say of all the drugs, why don't you just do marijuana? At least no one's blowing, at least instead of meth, why do marijuana? Nobody's blowing up their house with marijuana. I should not have opened my fucking mouth. And of course this comes from Seattle. Lake City home damaged in pot-related explosion. Is pot incendiary? A refrigerator you know, it burns, but does it? A refrigerator explosion rocked a late city home Monday night while its resident was admittedly extracting THC from marijuana. Thirty-seven-year-old resident at the scene told investigators his refrigerator exploded and admitted he was making hash oil, a concentrated form of marijuana. Explosion shattered four windows and moved the back wall of the house. Three inches. No one was injured. First of all, I have a couple questions. <laughs> a couple questions. What's hash oil? It's hash oil. Well, it's it's the oil and marijuana that's got the THC in it. And, and then do you like drink it? Well, no. You technically you mix it in with like brownie batter and stuff. Oh, okay. Because t- yeah, brown marijuana brownies, they're not just ground up marijuana leaves in there. They oh. they, they actually extract the THC in the hash I oil. Thought that's exactly what it was. Yeah. And I'm of course, really... people do. Yeah. I, I, I people do. It's called hash. People do smoke hash. I'm really square. I guess I'm square also, too. What about the oil extraction prog- process is incendiary? I don't know. Like. <laughs> but apparently you can knock your wall back three inch. That might not sound like a lot. You know, unless. To move a wall of your home? That's a fucking lot. Unless you're a guy and then this is three inches. But, um, you know, if, if. To to knock your wall, this, that's a long way to knock back a fucking wall. With with, Jesus Christ, why? Well, for to get stoned, presumably. I know. Can't you just smoke it? Can't you? Oh, apparently, you run chemicals over the weed to separate out the hash oil. Okay. And I suppose those chemicals are incendiary. Can't you just smoke it, people? Fuck yeah, sake. Whatever happened to that? Whatever. Why do you have to get creative with this shit? Okay? Because, hey, it wound up burned anyway. Blew out the windows and knocked back a wall. Behold the power of pot. It sounds God, like damn. a Twisted Sister video. Like, I picture the guy walking out with his face all blackened and a bald spot like Daffy Duck. <laughs> You know what? If he inhaled enough of it, he probably thought he looked exactly like that, too. Uh, 
So, yeah. Well, last week uh, we talked about that immigration officer who tried to get his wife on a terrorist oh, list to keep her. Fucking and, guy. And I, I made a point of stressing, no, no, this is a this is a UK immigration officer. As if American immigration officers are so much better. I should have kept my mouth shut. Because guess what? Have you been deported? No. Damn. Immigration officer traded citizenship for 200 egg rolls. <laughs> I love the look of this. What? Santa Ana, California. An immigration officer has been indicted on charges that she took cash and egg rolls as bribes from immigrants seeking citizenship and green cards. Prosecutors say 47-year-old year Mai Nu Nguyen. Oh, God. Nguyen. Nguyen, thank you. Uh, was indicted Wednesday on three counts of solicitation of a bribe. Prosecutors say she took 200 egg rolls from a citizenship applicant and received $1,000 and $2,200 bribes from two other immigrants since 2011. She worked as a egg officer rolls. officer for a U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services in Santa Ana, where she reviewed immigration applications for benefits. Egg rolls. They give those to you for free. I know! With 200 egg rolls, you get citizenship. <laughs> People are at uh, King Drew. What do you suppose an order of General Siles would get me? Girls, yeah. You want pork fried rice? <laughs> Citizenship and pork fried rice? Fortune cookies? Egg roll. Of all the... I mean, I imagine homemade ones would be better than, like, the takeout ones, probably. But still... That's yeah. a low number to me. You better be coming with a pallet of lifetime fucking supply of egg rolls. Yeah. I mean, if it was burritos, I'd understand. Because as we've learned the last few weeks, burritos have magical fucking powers. This is a person we're trusting to keep potentially... I understand getting citizenship in America is harder than it has to be. I understand. I understand it's a pain in the ass. And lots, and we depend on immigrant labor in very bad ways. I get that. But we also depend on citizenship and immigration to keep out potentially people who want to blow us the fuck up. Ostensibly. That's the idea. That better be a lot more than 200 egg rolls. Because you could fit that in a backpack, man. I'm thinking there better be like a trucking ball of egg rolls. If if I'm going to risk letting your ass into the country. Because what was, what was the recommendation here? Look, look. I don't have papers. I can't prove where I came from. But these got pork in them. That's all I'm saying. I'm going to leave this right here. I got 199 of his friends waiting right outside. The world might be a better place if egg rolls were our primary form of currency. It would, yeah. Of course, it'd be a lot more cholesterol-clogged place, but a better place. Yeah. Gassier, because they yeah. have a lot of cabbage in them. <laughs> yes. A smellier place, but ultimately possibly a happier place. Happier, but smellier. So every once in a while on the show, we have someone who is absolutely out of their fucking mind. Every once in a while? Okay, yeah, usually. Batman from last week? Yeah, okay. And you just gotta look on at what they do, not just in terms of they're broken, but just in awe of the will involved to get to this point, to do these sorts of things. And this, this might sound like an innocuous headline, relatively, to start, but once we get into the story, you'll realize this guy, this guy was determined to do him some crazy. Um, this comes from the Sun Gazette. Man steals cop car, leads police on chase. But there's more to it. High speed chase between. But wait, there's more. There's always more. Between old Lincolnshire town, uh, old Lincoming, Lincoming. No, it Lycoming. looks like Lycoming. Lycoming? All right. Township mm -hmm. police and a Williamsport man, the history of car theft, resulted in a stolen police cruiser and a long list of criminal charges. Um, 
he, as officers arrived at the scene, the man, identified as Anthony I. Perez, uh, exited the parking lot in a blue Toyota Tundra, which had been reported stolen. He was pulled up behind the Toyota and activated his emergency lights. Perez allegedly sped off. We have your high-speed high pursuit there. Then Perez allegedly exited the vehicle and ran, shedding some of his clothing as Hughes chased him on foot. We're already Thank getting you. into it. Yeah. Because when the cops are chasing me, the first thing I'm thinking is, oh my god, I've got to get my pants off. Well, you know how in movies they always, like, take their jacket off to quickly change their appearance and grab a hat off a nearby rack? Like, you got to quick change your appearance. Well, so, yeah, that would be if you're intending to get away. So, like, the cop's like, I'm chasing a guy. Have you seen him? Well, I think it's that guy. No, the guy I was chasing wasn't naked. Bam. I, I love the the next line says so much because there's a page missing here. Somehow, Perez managed to get in the officer's cruiser and drove away. Somehow. So between shedding his clothes and this somehow, suddenly he's driving the cop's car. <laughs> when the funny how that. It didn't make it into the report. Didn't, did it? Yeah, somehow. And, and they didn't even catch... When the police car was recovered later that day, his, he actually got away. He fucking got the hell away. They had to find the car later, and they had what they got him on was, according to uh, the uh, in-dash camera... Perez allegedly passed other drivers in no passing zones at high rate of speed and activating and deactivating the cruiser's emergency equipment. So this guy is in the police car, and the first thing he does is he passes in the wrong lane and he starts playing with all the buttons. And don't lie. If you were in that situation, the first thing you would be doing is going, what the fuck does this button do? Woo! Do, don't police cars have, like, a low jack? <laughs> They're supposed to. Or, like, a GPS chip? They're supposed to. I just did. I, I'm, I'm intrigued <laughs> by somehow. Rainer says he was definitely singing Bad Boys at least part of the time. <laughs> bad Boys, Bad Boys. What you go? You know what you gonna do when they come for you? <laughs> you apparently are gonna rip off your clothes and steal their car when they come for you. It's important to have an answer to that question, and he does now. He knows what he's going to do when they come for him. I'm not even blaming the guy this time, because there's that somehow. Yeah. What happened there? So what was going on? Okay, the, uh, pursued the uh, suspect. He uh, was in the vehicle. I pulled him over. He got out of the car and started running. Then somehow he got in my car and drove away. Back up a second. Yeah. Somehow? You need to expand on that, Buford. Somehow. That's some Barney what? Fife shit. He was a wizard. <laughs> That's why he had to get naked, to expose his wand. Oh, Tara. Don't. That was awful. No. I love that I have an honest to God room shot now. So, you know, on Craigslist, you can get just about anything. Just by fucking thing. I got a washer and dryer on Craigslist for, like, I think under $300 for both of them. Good washer and dryer. Still have them right now. They work. Was there a dead hooker inside either of them? No dead hooker. I was surprised, too. Nice. Got a treadmill for, like, 70 bucks, Like, a $300 treadmill for 70 bucks. Got it on Craigslist. Craigslist, you can find a lot of interesting things at relatively reasonable prices. This, I do not think, counts as a reasonable price by anyone's measure or estimation. Clarence Mann accused of offering sex act for boat trailer. Oh. Clarence, Iowa. Mann's accused of offering a sex act in exchange for a boat trailer. According to the Lynn County Attorney's Office, 37-year-old Stan M. Searing posted an ad on Craigslist offering sex for a boat trailer. Marion Police Department conducted an investigation of the ad, made contact with Searing. Police said Searing agreed to provide a sex act and $25 in exchange for the boat trailer. 
So apparently the sex wasn't good enough. He had to sweeten the deal with shipping and handling. That's just low self-esteem. That really, man. I know. It's harsh. Wasn't there, there was a big internet controversy a few years ago for a woman who advertised on Craigslist that she would have sex with you if you bought her an epic mount in World of Warcraft. It was epic mount for an epic mount, and it was like a big thing. C in the channel says it was probably a tugboat. Ha! <laughs> Stay off the poop deck. Yeah. It's a schooner! <laughs> When, Lord, when will I see the goddamn sailboat? Well, when you blow me. Yeah, exactly. Apparently. That's an oddly specific thing to be offering sex for, too. Yeah. How That's do you... an oddly specific transaction in general. How do you get to a situation where you're going, you're like... You're looking for someone who, A, has a boat trailer, B, wants to get rid of their boat trailer, and C... And C is willing to trade said boat trailer for sex. Like, you're looking for... That's a niche market. I... I don't know how he thought this was going to work. And the, I wonder how surprised he was when someone offered. Because the police called him and they're like, okay. How do you keep a straight face making that sting call? Okay, yeah, we got a nice boat trailer here. But, uh, you know, gonna need a little bit more... Than just the fucking. I need. I need. I need cab fare. So twenty five bucks. Yeah. Can I get a Big Mac? I need some change back. Do you, from that. Do, you do you cuddle? I just why. That's. You could have probably found a boat trailer on Craigslist for twenty five dollars. Yeah, you probably. Could have done it for just the $25. No, I mean, if you're just looking for a good time, that's fine. I'm not here to judge you. But there's a whole other section of Craigslist for that. Yeah. So that you're probably, like I said, really <laughs> like narrow niche market. So you're probably going to do better just heading over to Casual Encounters. Speaking. And saying you have a nautical fetish and going with it. Speaking of that, that. Is. Speaking of that whole other section of Craigslist, I'm glad you brought that up. You're probably suddenly, not. Suddenly I'm not. Yeah, you um, Are you familiar with Airbnb? Oh, I know where we're going. You know where we're going. Yeah. Airbnb I is... I tweeted this. Airbnb is a service wherein you can offer your own home to other people as... Which... Ugh, why I would know. you do that? As a, as a place to stay, like a... a, a uh, a bed and breakfast. Um, and supposedly it's worked out great, mostly. But oh but god. This is exactly why. Yeah, no. oh, oh god, the mostly. The mostly. Man comes home to triple X freak orgy. I, that that's the that's from Time magazine. Dubs this quote triple X freak fest orgy. Well, that's what the ad... That is what the ad called it. After renting his New York apartment on Airbnb. New York comedian Ari Teneman... Or Taman. Ari Taman? Ari Taman. Uh, came back to his Chelsea apartment Friday, supposedly rented out to a guy whose brother and uh, sister-in-law were in town for a wedding, only to allegedly find a triple X freak fest, also known as Orgy, going on in his living room. He promptly emailed Airbnb... Who responded on Twitter, we're sorry to hear that. We're working on it. We'll be back to you soon. Taman's response was, take your time. It's only a disgusting, illegal, dangerous sex ring you put in my house with my address and keys. Brian, call me. No big. And they were, like, removing his furniture. Taman's like, address. he came in, he was watching people, like, take his furniture out of his place. Taman's address was posted on a recently deleted tweet that announced it as the site for a 10 p.m. to 4 a.m., $25 Manhattan Triple X Freak Fest. $25. Seems to be the going rate. Not only was his days. not only was his furniture disassembled and thrown outside for maximum freaking space, but quote, it appears some of the stuffed animals were abused. Taman chronicled his unfortunate findings on Tumblr, quote, 
You just sent a porn sex fest into my apartment. I've had over $87,076 in losses. I had to call 911 and have these triple X freak fest people removed from my apartment. My super is having me evicted and my landlord, who and I do not feel safe here anymore, so it's hundreds of people, got a text saying there's a triple X freak fest in my apartment and continue showing up according to the doorman who I'll never be able to look in the face again. Because he showed up. <sighs> and you're like, damn it, the orgy's Tuesday, Bob. How many times do I have to tell you? And this is why... Monday cause... is book club, Tuesday is orgy. It's not that hard, Bob. This is one of those things where, you know, a hundred... Maybe it is that hard. Maybe that's the oh, problem. Oh, oh. A hundred... Uh, this is one of those things where, as a business, you can have 100,000 transactions go perfect. But the one time it doesn't, that's the one that's fucked you. Literally! Somebody said, what if this had been Tara's hippos? Oh, oh, heads would have rolled. Technically, they're, that's considered trespassing, and... Yeah. I mean, it's burglary they like threw his shit out in the street yeah what what, they, what happened when they got there all right, all right this is great but we gotta uh, lose the sofa and coffee table because we gotta have plenty of room to fuck never ever run a black light over that place there is evil there that does not sleep abuse the stuffed animals i know man you know, honestly, that's just rude. You come yeah. into someone else's house and you start fucking their plushies. My nephew, this this is my nephew's favorite of the few hippos I brought here because he likes to wrestle with it. <laughs> he likes to, like, body slam it and j jump on top of it. And, you know, that kind of abuse. That's fine. Around, fine. I will let him beat up my hippo. Right. All day, because he enjoys it, and you know, no. And launching them off the ceiling fans, you're fine with right. that. Right, he's beating it up on my bed. He's having a good time. Right, that is the only kind of stuffed animal abuse that's acceptable. No one's touched your your hippo in inappropriate fashion. It's the only he, time a stuffed animal would have to look. Like, he did like punch it there as a finishing move. So, Which so, you have to admit, that's kind of clever. When a stuffed animal has been abused, does it have to point to where the bad man touched them on a person? I guess. Or like on a smaller stuffed animal? <laughs> like, would, would, would Hibernian hippo here have to like point on the mippo? <laughs> I don't know. That's a tough uh, question. So our last one tonight... We remember you weren't here for it. You should have been here for it. Um, those of you who were here for it, a kid got on Twitter and offered if he got enough retweet retweets, he would fuck a hot pocket. He then did so. And honestly, while that's stupid, and it, you know, Doug, I know people didn't respond to demo reel as well as you were hoping, but oh, Jesus, man, got a website named after. No, bad. No. <laughs> no, um, no, you're not. Um, so that eminently was harmless, right? It's your own, your own dick, your own hot pocket. That's completely. But of, I guess, of course, being the Internet, someone was liable to up the ante. And good fucking Christ, did they? I mean, Jesus, this is like... Now people, now people think I was insulting Doug. I really wasn't. I'm so sorry. Mm -hmm. I just know that because he switched back. And I all. know. it's. <sighs> Let him go. So, yeah, it, this, is, this is an escalation of... Well, yeah, this is, this is pretty much the embodiment of wow, that escalated quickly. Man offers to shoot someone for a hundred retweets. <gasps> promptly arrested. 
I feel like this was an Arnold Schwarzenegger movie in the 80s. <laughs> oh, Jesus, God. Um, it all started when 20-year-old Los Angeles resident Dakiri Dijon... Really? Really? Dakari? Is it? It's Dakari Dijon. It's Dijon. That last name is Dijon. D-I-J-O-N. Like, oh, well, no, that's the middle name. That's the middle name. Dakari Dijon Mackinough. That's a name. I'm changing my name to that tomorrow. Posted a photo with a rifle pointed at a Los Angeles street. The caption read, and let me show you this picture because this is fucked up. 100 retweets and I'll shoot someone walking. Fortunately, local police were notified before it came to that, according to Los Angeles Times. He was probably located and arrested Wednesday on suspicion of making criminal threats and remains in jail with a $50,000 bail. According to Los Angeles Police Department, officers were warned about the photo that was circling on Twitter on Wednesday morning. They were able to track down McEnough's location to a home downtown where they recovered the same air rifle that was featured in the photo, which is screen-capped, retweet, and suspended account below. McEnough's Twitter account, still DMC has since been suspended, but you can see remaining mentions of his handle. <coughs> it appears his very not-safe-for-work Tumblr is intact. He describes himself as half-black, half-Jamaican, Chicago-born, Houston-raised, Cali Livin. The background of his site features him pointing at a camera, and here's there, with a rifle. What upsets me more is that people actually did... Yes! You know, honestly, that's a low number of retweets. Yeah. Before you'll like, I know it's an air rifle, but still. Like if 200 egg rolls is low for, for a green card, 100 retweets is definitely low for shooting somebody. I don't care if it's a fucking Red Rider BB gun. 100 like retweets. a water gun, 100 retweets would be fair. Like, I'll shoot this guy in the face with a water gun for 100 retreats. Won't that be funny? Ha ha. If it's going to break the skin, Ugh. first of all, just don't do it. Don't be don't be a dick. Yeah, Renaissance says, like, I get 100 retweets if I post a picture of a donut. <laughs> I've probably gotten 100 retweets posting pictures of Bridget. Yeah, don't don't be saying a hundred on the internet. Like, you give a hundred a hundred because you know there's easily find hundred people on the internet going, yeah, I want him to shoot somebody. Click. Yeah. And I don't, say this Please don't please don't shoot people with anything other than funny, cute water guns and bubble guns. I if you want to shoot strangers with fun bubbles, great. I say this as somebody who makes a living on the internet doing this, being a complete attention whore. There's a line, okay? That there, this is like Twitter hitman or some shit, you know? This could escalate quickly. Although, to be fair, like, we have done stuff where, like, if people donate money, we emasculate you in varying ways. 100 wee tweets. But at least you're only doing that to yourself. Yeah. 100 wee... You're not like, what donate would... to charity and I'll kill this puppy. A thousand wee tweets and... I can't even say retweet. Why? And I'll make my neighbor's baby cry. A thousand retweets and you can pick who I shoot. No. Just don't don't shoot people. Don't shoot people. Even if it's just an air rifle. <laughs> Why like, do we have hard. to say don't shoot people? I don't know, but it makes me sad. Don't shoot people for retweets. For Twitter! For fucking... For... And that's the other thing. You have an account on Twitter. They have your, 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 your IP address. Yeah. They know where you live. I don't care if you're behind five proxies or some shit. They know where you live. You silly fuck. You gave them a picture of your street! The NSA is in your bathroom right now. The NSA is looking up out of your shower drain like fucking Pennywise. Right now. Yeah, we, we are in... All of you. They got like one NSA motherfucker for everybody in the country watching us pee. America. 
because we're in Andy Warhol's future. We're in everybody's going to be famous for 15 minutes. We're in that right now. Yeah. We're but, like, we're like actually in this weird country past that. <laughs> we're like in this bizarre, I don't even know if it's dystopian, but like surrealist landscape that's a little past that. Yeah. Where people will be internet famous for like two minutes. Yeah, I think Andy Warhol, if he was here now, would just be like, I don't, I, I, I don't know. I'm going to start doing pretty Bob Ross-esque landscapes. And we're, talking, and we're talking about a man who made time capsules out of his used underwear. It's not a joke. He's he, a weird dude. Even he would be like, fuck, done, I'm out. Yeah, I'd be like, yeah, you know what? I'm just going to paint this bowl of fruit over here. You guys around. Don't put it past people. If you give, if you can get. Damn, you can give me an excuse to shoot somebody. I'll have to think about it. I really want to is, think about it. How far are we from like the Running Man and Death Race being a thing? Not far. We got reality TV already. Because we have, well, we have televised executions, don't we? In some state. I think closed circuit, but not actually TV. TV. Okay. Yeah. But. Like, I, I feel like we're not far off. I did see a story today where a reality show wants to get couples to fuck in a box. Oh. So, we're getting there. Why in a box? I don't, well, I guess because they can't show it. With a fox? <laughs> in a house? With a mouse? We'll not do it here or there. We'll not do it anywhere. Uh, I, I know I heard about a show called Naked Dating. Which is exactly what it sounds like. They just send people on dates, but they're they have to be naked. Cut out the middleman. I got. I. I don't. It's all over. So I guess this week we learned people will literally do anything for Twitter fame. Anything. Remember when? Remember when it was at least what would you do for a Klondike bar? Yeah. Now it's who will I kill when for a Klondike? At least a tangible ice cream reward. This isn't even tangible. No. Because what? You know we're what? I can. Even, we're not even degrading ourselves for the tangible reward of ice cream. Yes. Reward. It's just for fleeting. It's for attention. Internet attention. Seriously, it's just it's just attention. Hold out for the ice cream. We learned this week that when you invite someone into your home, check some fucking references. Well, you can't on a website like that. So don't do that. If you don't, I I, I don't know why anybody would. That weirds me to write the fuck. Yeah, out. the Airbnb it weirds me out too because you're like. People be even if they're your... not running an orgy in your place, like, how do you know they haven't stuck all your stuff up their ass? See, my my mind went to how do you know they haven't licked your remote? You went with how do you know they haven't stuck the remote up their ass? Well, how do you? How do you know they haven't just walked around rubbing their junk on all your stuff? See, I'm 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 peeing in your shower. Bizarrely, I'm going the more innocent place. You know, lick their finger and stick it in all your food. Using your stuffed animals. You're going to places involving genitals. Well, yeah. If they lick the remote, you can just fucking lysol it. There's no lysoling for shoving it up your ass. <laughs> There's evil there that does not sleep. Can you boil the remote? Oh, I the Mordor references today. <laughs> We learned exactly how many egg rolls it takes to get into America. 200. I wonder if there's an inflation rate on, like, spring rolls. Uh, yeah, is it, what's the... What's those the, are just the veggies. So, do you need, like, 300 of those? What's the conversion? Yeah. Yeah. We learned this week that... You know, you can find any... You can get anything on Craigslist, but... High, hold, keep your standards high. Just don't don't go. Just, you know, use the appropriate forum. Yeah. If you're looking for a good time, casual encounters is right down the hall. You don't if you're need. Looking to buy a boat trailer for twenty four dollars? Buy your boat right. trailer. Buy the boat trailer. Don't. If you want to combine them, do that later. 
That would be uncomfortable because there's no place to sit on a boat trailer. It's all angular metal and it's made to hold a boat. It's not comfy. Gee, I don't want to. You ever seen the movie Kinky Boots? No. No. The guy makes these boots for a drag queen and she hates them because they're really horrible and practical looking. He's like, well, I thought they'd be comfortable. And she's like, sex isn't supposed to be comfortable. And it's Chiwetel Ejiofor is this fantastic, wonderful drag queen. Sex isn't supposed to be comfortable. You're doing it wrong, man. We well, learned... You, you don't know about the boat trailer. We learned that one of the most powerful words in the English language is somehow. Yeah. Because that can contain a whole lot of stuff. It's a word full of possibilities. That might also see your ass fired, depending on what's entailed in that somehow. Um, now I have the song Somewhere from West Side Story stuck in my head. <laughs> well, apparently Up Your Ass is the somewhere. Somehow, someway, he stole the car. We learned that pot is not as safe as we thought it was, and not in the way we thought. Probably, yeah. It's probably not going to kill you, but it might explode if you do it wrong. But it might remodel your home. Um, mm. But I'll bet you the pot was totally safe because it was in a refrigerator. And as Indiana Jones taught us, you're safe in a refrigerator. You just can. About anything. You totally can. Although, does it negate it if the explosion? I suppose it would if the explosion's in the refrigerator. I suppose that probably negates it. So then is everything outside the refrigerator safe? Obviously not. That is that is actually a good point. I'm beginning to doubt the Crystal Skull's logic. Finally, we learned how many beers are too many beers, and that's 4,400. <laughs> what what's amusing to me is, wasn't that a show about, like, alien abductees? What? The 4,400? Yeah, the 4,400. Only in this case, it's 4,400 like, beers in the Was it a theme party? That would be a really interesting theme party. I wanted to close tonight, though, with something a little uh, special. That most of you remember the uh, the douche quake is a thing on my show. Well, today in Los Angeles, they did indeed have a uh, an earthquake that registered four point four on the Richter scale. And um, get this clip here. They uh, they were they had these uh, reporters that were on the air during it. And come on, you're killing me. Compu there we go. All right. And I want you to note here, we're going to put this on the screen so you guys can see it. I want you to note the headline that's playing at the bottom as the earthquake hits. Chris Brown due back in court after allegedly violating probation. And there we go. Earthquake. Okay, it, it appears to have stopped. <laughs> um, we're going to... Oh God! Ooh, you touch my tra la la. You're manifesting reality. <laughs> I'm sorry, but that the dude. I don't think we should be able to manifest these things into reality. Dude, douchequake. Seriously, you mentioned Chris Brown and the Earth done shake. Coincidence? I think but not. It's God somewhere checking his Twitter feed, just being like, Enough! 